My C++ Minecraft clone was kind of a mess. I mean, look at all this stuff in the main function. It's awful. So I decided I needed to rewrite it. But I didn't just rewrite the clone. I decided to make a whole game engine. Introducing Willowvox Engine, a game engine specifically made for making voxel games. Today, I'm going to go over the basics of how the engine works and the decisions I made along the way. Then, I'll show the highlights from the streams where I try to recreate scuffed Minecraft using the engine, so stick around for that. Keep in mind, it's still on a prototype stage, so just about everything you currently see will be rewritten. Let's get into it. Here's the entry point, which is located inside the engine. The client, which is the game the developer is making, defines create application in its project. The engine then creates the application and runs it. The base application class includes a whole bunch of functions to be overridden by the client application. It also includes some application variables, which I eventually plan to move to a separate config file. I also plan on moving the asset loading and make it less of a manual process for the client. In the start of application's run function, it creates the rendering API in the window. The reason there's a rendering API object is so that I can add support for more graphics APIs later. I'll get more into rendering later though. We then call the client start function and then the world start function. We then start the game loop. This mostly consists of calculating delta time, rendering, and calling the client update function. This is the blocks class, which holds all the blocks to be loaded. This register block function is how the client adds blocks to the game. The block class looks just about the same as it did in the original scuffed Minecraft. The world class essentially plays the role of a scene in this engine. It has some basic functions as well as a chunk manager. The test code that you see is all the variables I'm including until I create a proper asset manager. The world start function creates all the test code. These shaders are to be written in the client. The world's update and render functions are pretty simple currently. Update just calls chunk manager's update function and render sets a shader variable and then renders the chunk manager. I soon plan to create an entity component system and then the world will get more complicated because much of the logic will take place here. However, this prototype was meant to be able to do what scuffed Minecraft does, so I didn't make that quite yet. The chunk manager class is what handles all the chunks in the world. This is what really makes Willowvox unique. All of the chunk related code is handled by the engine with some helper functions for the client to use. The chunk manager is very similar to the planet class from scuffed Minecraft and it is very long. It includes many functions like this one which convert world position into chunk position and local position in order to get or pass data from and to different chunks. The render function definitely needs some improvement, but I have plans for how I want to render things in the future. Right now this function not only calls all the chunk rendering functions, but also checks for and deletes any chunks that are out of range. I do that here for efficiency, but I should really find a better way of organizing this. The chunk class is also very similar to what it was in the original C++ Minecraft. Its code mostly consists of generating the mesh and rendering. I also have this chunk data class, which has helper functions for converting x, y, and z coordinates into an index. Before getting into rendering, I want to take a small moment to talk about the event system in the engine. An event contains simple information about the event being called, and it gets derived by specific events which each contain their own data. The event dispatcher is what handles the registering and calling of events. A class instance creates an event dispatcher, which other objects can register functions to. Then when the event is dispatched, it runs all the listener functions. Here's an example of an event that is made in Willowvox. It gets called whenever the window is resized, and it contains a width and height variable to be passed to any listeners. Rendering is based on this rendering API class. I want to support many different rendering APIs, so I made this abstraction. Right now, the engine only supports OpenGL, and I only know how to use OpenGL, so everything here is based on OpenGL. Because of that, it's probably all going to be rewritten someday. There are also classes for different rendering objects. Here's the shader class. Here's the texture class, here's the mesh class, and here's the window class. This one's more interesting because it also contains all of the input related events and because it's key to the application running. I'm not going to go through all the OpenGL classes, but there is an OpenGL version of all of these classes where the implementation happens. The rendering API is responsible for creating all windows, shaders, meshes, and textures as you can see here. To render an object, you first create a mesh. You also need a material for rendering. You can put the material on the mesh inside a mesh renderer. Then you can just call the mesh renderer's render function to render it. There are also post-processing shaders, which are added to the window and rendered according to whether or not they are enabled. Now let's take a look at a client application using Willowvox Engine. The constructor contains an application name and a default window width and height that you can modify. After that, we load any textures or shaders we need, and then we register all of our blocks. We do some more configuration and object creation at the beginning of the start function. We then subscribe to the window input events, just like you should subscribe to the channel right now, such as the mouse scroll and key press events. There are two more input events, and then we create a post-processing shader for our underwater shader. Our update function contains camera movement logic. This is just about the same as it was in Scuffed Minecraft. Our final three functions are render, where you can render any other objects besides chunks, configure post-processing, which is where you can turn post-processing effects on and off, and render UI, where you can choose what UI to render. Currently, I'm just using IMGUI until I make my own UI system. 
The last thing that's necessary is to define Willowvox's create application function and return your application. Now let's take a look at how Willowvox can be used to create scuffed Minecraft. I first try to make Willowvox a static library because then the final client executable would not require any external library files. However, this didn't go quite as I expected. Alright, so the problem that I'm having right now is that I've never made a C++ library before, so I don't actually know how to <laughs> make the application run. So we're getting a whole lot of I am GUI errors, which is not good because <laughs> that's our UI system. Oh, you know what? None of these things are included in the project. That might do it. Run, please. All right, bit. Okay, so now it's having an error msvcrt. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Typically a configuration problem. I'm sure it is. Probably because you use C++. That's fair. Okay, let's go back to scratch. Oh, I can't find the main function. <laughs> well, that would do it, I guess. <laughs> well, why can't it find the main function? We do, we do have a main function. It is included here. This is our main function. I have the main function in a library. All right, so I guess we need a main function. But then I need to like figure it out. So I guess we we just copy this and put it here. I don't know. Main. All right. Does it function now? <laughs> Woohoo! It runs. It doesn't do anything when it runs, but it does run. <laughs> All right. Sweet. So it did work. I know it gave an error, but that's just because we didn't finish setting up the project yet. But it is working. So I guess I need to figure out how libraries work. <laughs> So I switched to making it a dynamic library after the stream. Then I added all the other features of Scuffed Minecraft. For it to run, we need a camera. I don't have proper documentation yet. Camera is equal to new camera and put in window. And why are you having a stroke? So we made a camera. Oh wait, we need to create a world. That's right. Okay. First of all, we need to include Willowvox. But this is where we need the main care, the main camera because the world renders everything around the camera. I think we need to define chunk manager as well equals new chunk manager because this requires a world gen and then for our world gen we're just uh, i guess we can do noise settings 2d noise and some of this is still like temporary code as well new terrain gen and this is using noise so then over here i guess we can just do destroy or delete <laughs> noise delete world gen title is wrong you're using tools on a game engine well you see it would be a game engine if I didn't have to define <laughs> main in here. Somebody told me that the difference between a library and a game engine is that a game engine has the entry point. And it does have the entry point, it just doesn't work. <laughs> Let's do it, Let's see if it runs. I actually don't know if there's anything else that I need or not, but we'll see. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, it did run, but <laughs> I don't know about this. <laughs> Here's some things I forgot to do. First of all, we didn't actually register any blocks. So currently the there are no blocks for it to render. So I'm surprised it actually ran because we do kind of need to do that. Register block. Why are you giving me errors? It would help if I included it. So then we just need to make a new block. These are the coordinates of the block. And then we have block solid. And this is going to be a grass block. I'm going to make a better resource loading system as well. Grass water. There we go. <laughs> now they're actual blocks, so that's cool. So that's like half of Minecraft. Okay, I'm gonna screenshot the source code. I there's a GitHub repository somewhere. <laughs> Mow your lawn. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I gotta do that. We can actually set the windows uh, background color, and we can do apparently the faces aren't even calling by default, which I didn't know. Window dot set mouse disabled true. Look at that, so much easier. Man, I'm so happy that I made this game engine. In update, we can say if window dot key down key w then camera dot position plus equal to camera dot front times some sort of move speed times delta time w s and then we can do a and d. All right, so now we can actually move around. I don't know why the window says. I don't know if I can change that or not. I like how I say, I don't know if I can do this or not, as if this isn't my own game engine, I should probably know these things. Can I do like a set size? No, I can only get the one. <laughs> so this is probably something to add to the game engine, the ability to change the default resolution. <laughs> All right, take notes, guys, take notes. <laughs> New issue, we're gonna say, add the ability to change the default window size. I think that the, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of important. <laughs> Window dot mouse move event dispatcher dot register listener. This is only possible through events right now. Camera dot direction dot 
y plus equal to x times 0.1f direction dot x is greater than 89.0f we should get mass movement all right cool so now we can actually move the mouse post processing shader under water shader and then we can do rendering api dot create shader and i'm just going to copy this <laughs> it didn't copy correctly okay there we go so now all you need to do is create a post processing shader like that and then window dot add post processing shader underwater shader and now it's it works uh, just kidding guys it actually doesn't work <laughs> oh you know what i know why because i set it to false if we set it to true this is fantastic underwater shader dot enabled is equal to chunk manager instance dot get block id at pause and then we just put in the camera dot position and that one liner right there we can do underwater shader only if you're underwater <laughs> yeah post processing woohoo on mouse click result is equal to physics raycast it'd help if i spelled physics right camera dot position camera dot direction and then we just need to set hit distance we'll just do 10 blocks i still spelled physics wrong no i just didn't include it <laughs> so basically we raycast and then if we got if we hit a block then we set that block to air what is this skipped by a case label. What does that mean? Oh, so it needs to be declared in a block. So like that, that is whack. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, so it doesn't work. You know what, I'm just gonna use an if statement. I don't really care enough. I, it's not working. <laughs> It'll optimize it anyway, who cares? It still doesn't work. Never mind. Well, we'll go back to switch and we'll just actually figure out why it's not working. Oh, whoops, I wrote direction instead of front. That's why. There we go. Okay, so now we can break blocks. So great. We don't have to spend an entire hour writing code. We could just write this one, well, two lines of code to break blocks. Right clicking. This is the thing that I didn't quite do yet. So we're going to do this again. Well, I'm just going to copy because I don't care. Ooh. <laughs> Unfortunately, while I made breaking blocks really easily, this is a little bit more difficult. <laughs> and this is why I didn't want to rewrite it because this is a mess. And then we can do that. Sweet. So that all works. After this, I added a crosshair. Let's do this. Let's just see if it renders at all. Okay, there. Now it takes up the entire screen. <laughs> Guys, it's the most useful crosshair of all time. At least you know where the center of your screen is. I do need to actually... Okay, I figured it out, guys. Okay, so now the only problem is, is when it resizes, we need to make it again. Now it should work, I think. <laughs> <Well, laughs> Alright, give me a minute. I need to actually like remake the entire thing. Well, there we go. Now the crosshair shows up in the right place. And then we just had the block outline. <gasps> oh, look at it. It's inverted now. It's like Minecraft. And then I added the block outline. There we go. It's hard to see, but I don't... <laughs> I don't currently... <laughs> Hold on. I think that in the original scuffed Minecraft, we actually change line properties however there is zero ability to do that in <laughs> in um in my game engine which is awesome i didn't really think about that one render block yeah see we're doing gl line width so oh well well that's okay we'll just we'll figure it out in a second but for now we'll do result dot hit pause so that literally just sets it to whatever point you collided with it does not set it to the <laughs> actual block position okay so now the the outline is working. It's still really hard to see, but it is working. So sometimes it crashes when it closes, but that's okay. You know, it's already closed. It, it needed to crash anyway. It's fine. Finally, I decided to make world generation that looked like scuffed Minecraft. Now I have a world generation system in the engine. The base world gen class simply loops through the blocks and sets them to air. I also have this noise world gen class, which uses 2D Perl and noise to generate terrain. By default, it just sets it to whatever block ID one is. However, this comes nowhere near what Scuffed Minecraft has. It's missing 3D noise and surface features, so I decided to add that on stream. What in the world is this? <laughs> um, so, I don't know about this one. There we go. That's, <laughs> that's a little bit better. Whoa. Guys, it's the Farlands. <laughs> what? <laughs> huh? There are blocks in the sky. I don't know what's going on. I don't like this. this is nice. We'll go with this for now. How about that? Does it work? Likely not. We'll see. <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> There's nothing here. What? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> okay, this is definitely 
bizarre. I like, I think this is what Minecraft caves should look like. Yeah, it removes the water, which I don't like. <laughs> oh yeah, it functions. So now we, uh, now we can do world features. Yay. I remember designing this system. I felt so intelligent. What is this? Hey, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, what happened? <laughs> Alright, this didn't... <laughs> what? Alright, I don't know what's going on here, but whatever it is, it, like, they're the sideways, which is not great. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why is it this, like, weird pattern of grass and dirt? What is going on? Oh, well, now it's all stone. <laughs> oh, that's why, because we're doing surface noise here when it should be surface block. There we go. Okay, now it's working. Ignore stuff with that. I don't care about it right now. All right, back to some other stuff now. We need to figure out why it's doing this. I think it's because we're using the wrong a wrong axes. Like instead of using the Y axis for height, we're using like the Z axis or something. Oh, whoops, I was doing local. Yeah, I was, I was using the wrong ones. I was just kind of using the wrong variables there. <laughs> it was literally switching Y for Z. <laughs> okay that is better okay i think they're working now cool now let's make them correct <laughs> i mean it kind of worked it's a very very dense forest cool now we're gonna need to lower that chance a little bit all right now there's not enough trees look at that that's much better that's trees right there man all right it works there we might have a little too like a few too many of everything but it does work. All right, there's still a lot of them. All right, trees need to be transparent. I don't even know why they're not. There we go, transparent leaves, easy. <laughs> now I know people are gonna yell at me. I know people are gonna yell at me. I know what you're gonna say. I'll fix it later. And if you don't know, good. Let's go over the engine's final terrain gen class because it's changed quite a bit since that stream. And by that, I mean I completely rewrote it. Terrain gen is meant to be a highly extensible class so that everything can be customized without having to rewrite a bunch of code. Because of this, just about everything can be overridden. We have two stages of generation, chunk blocks and surface features. Get block contains the logic for the shape of the terrain. It can't be overridden because if that changes, all the surface feature placement code would need to be changed as well, and then the whole class would be useless. However, there are many functions that can and likely should be overridden. For example, get sky block can be overridden to check for water to be placed. Get ground block is good to override to check if the block is on the surface and place grass there if it is. Here's the actual get block function. It checks for sky, caves, ore, and finally ground. And finally, here's the method for surface generation. By default, this simply checks if it is a cave and returns true if it isn't. As you can see, this requires significantly less variables than the one I was making on stream. I think this is much more valuable than the highly specialized one I had before. This is the logic for generating surface features. It's literally a copy paste of what I had before, so I'm not going to go over it in this video. That's all I have for this video. The GitHub repositories for both Willowvox and Scuffed Minecraft are in the description below. Let me know what you guys want to see me do next. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, Mike, Ironman60096, and FluxHD, and to my YouTube members, Raphael Amaro, Toffee, Miyaki, and Ulysses Jen. As always, I have my Discord server linked below as well. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.